Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you today? Well, just a quick look at the cats. This is Nipper. He's just come to say hello. And then down there is Sandy. He's getting a little bit of a fan club at the moment, old Sandy. Everybody likes him. And if you look just inside, you can see Sheba. She's the one with our with the gammy back legs. That's the one that we rescued uh, from Kalamaki. Uh, she'd obviously been run over and uh, we managed to get her back. The vet said at the time, if she'd been a dog, he'd have put her to sleep. But because she was a cat, you never quite know with cats. And so she's been with us now for quite a few years. Bless her. Where is she? Come on then, lovely girl. And then here's old Nipper just sat beside me here. Well, all I could say is what an interesting morning this morning I have for you. Anyway, I hope you're having a good day. Just to let you know, a uh, quick look at the, the skies again, actually, for you. It's looking grim today, not looking good. And as you can see, I'm on the back balcony at the moment. And the reason for that is because Yanni is out the front cutting the grass. In fact, I had to laugh. Dennis was talking about cutting his grass today. Uh, and Dennis says he likes doing it because it's kind of therapeutical. So uh, I saw Dennis yes yesterday. Uh, we had a good chat. Uh, we sorted a few things out for next year. And uh, obviously now Magdalena's completely shut down now. Uh, the last of the clearing up done. Uh, going into hibernation, ready for, for whatever transpires over the year. Right, a lot been going on in the news at the moment here. Um, Going to get straight to it. It looks like the COVID thing is on the way up again. Um, the Greek press now are sounding a little bit more alarmed about the increase, uh, sort of mega headlines, that sort of thing. Uh, 460 new cases from yesterday, plus uh, five new deaths. 85 people are in uh, intensive care. 142 are linked to known cases and 26 to uh, foreign travel as well. Now, that brings the total for Greece at the moment to 19,346 with 398 deaths. Now, in September, when you look at those numbers, Greece had 233 new cases and um, had uh, 20 deaths, no, sorry, two deaths, sorry, two deaths only. And then in August, uh, Greece had 75 new cases and uh, two deaths again and 12 people in the ICUs. Um, so all in all, it looks like the numbers have been growing over October and we're only into, what is it, the 4th of October at the moment? So the numbers are, are growing up. Um, now, looking at the latest infections, 207 of those new infections were in the Athens area, uh, where, um, believe it or not, in Athens, only four were actually from travel. Yep, so going through the airport and places like that and through the ports, only four people tested positive with the coronavirus in those locations, but in the main part of Athens, seven uh, new infections. Um, interestingly, looking at the figures for those new infections, uh, Pella, the northern region, had the biggest increase of 117. Now, this was basically from an infection in a canning factory in that area. Um, 117 of the employees tested positive there. Um, and this is not the first time. It seems that, that that area of northern Greece, Pella, that's where there's a lot of canning factories and food processing plants. Uh, they'd all uh, had been suffering with infections in those areas. And uh, now those figures are sort of becoming a little bit more known. So there you go. COVID not looking too good. It also puts questions uh, in for me as well about trying to get back to the UK, go see my mum. Um, who at the moment is uh, in a nursing home in Margate and uh, all the complications of just trying to go back and see her and she's not seen me since uh, uh, January, believe it or not. So, and, that, and that's a long time, although we speak on the phone, uh, but that's not the same. Anyway, um, local news. Local news is really interesting at the moment. Um, now, some of you may, may be aware of the Imar of Qatar, now, the big story here a few years ago was the Imara of Qatar had bought land here in Zakynthos up in the Volimez area of the island. And it was a controversial sale, so I'm not really going to go into the controversial side of it because, one, I don't want to leave myself open to uh, any form of uh, uh, litigation uh, because the case is still going through the courts. But for those people who don't know, it 
basically the Omar of Qatar bought 15,000 acres of land up in the Bolimez area of the island uh, where he plans to build obviously uh, a golf course and hotels. Now this would be fantastic for the island, this would be absolutely awesome. If we have a hotel with golf courses, with a golf course here, we effectively would become a 365 day a year island uh, because uh, most airlines, now this is pre-COVID, most airlines would run some form of service to the island uh, to bring golfers and I know Jane's brother was a big golfer before he had his stroke and a lot of my friends are golfers as well and I've met golfers through the cruise industry and stuff like that and trust me when you get into golf it's like being on crack with some people uh, they want to get a fix wherever they can find it and basically people would come to the island the knock-on effect for that is 365 days a year you'd have people coming um, you'd have to rethink tourism here the good thing is that um, there was also talk of building condos uh, on the new golf course uh, basically where people could buy their own property live on it stay on it rent it um, that then obviously creates another industry it would then mean that Volley Mez would actually become probably the next big resort here on the island as well plus as well the land that he bought also was in the area of the shipwreck so the shipwreck then would actually get a proper kind of visitor center built there was talk of a restaurant being built that kind of overlooked where the shipwreck was um, and very um, from the some of the pre preliminary drawings that were done uh, some real big ideas about how to really show the shipwreck off to its best obviously really capitalize on the shipwreck because to be honest yeah we capitalize in some ways but in other ways we it's not capitalized as good as it could be and everybody that goes up there says sometimes it's a bit disappointing when you get up there um, because there's no show when you get there if you see what I mean in the way of infrastructure of things to do restaurants um, where you would expect to have places uh, for people to be able to go and and have a coffee have a tea even use a toilet things like that it doesn't really exist at all uh, where the ship shipwreck is so it's not really shown off to its best anyway the sheikh of qatar his plan was i'm going to revitalize that whole area anyway he's got bogged down in legal issues etc etc now the big story at the moment uh, regards it all is that the company where the shares was sold to uh, for the investment even though it's still going through the courts at the moment um, there was a transfer of these shares to a state-owned Riyadh government agency and the story is uh, from various sources who wish to remain anonymous obviously for obvious reasons that this now state-owned Riyadh um, uh, company or, or organization is now being dismantled and the reason they say for this is mainly for political reasons because of what's going on between Greece and Turkey at the moment um, Qatar doesn't want to be embroiled in what's going on and it doesn't want its public image of being seen to be plundering uh, private land in Zakynthos um, it, it just basically wants to try and I think discreetly uh, get on with what it's doing in the legal case that's uh, running on at the moment and basically trying to keep a bit of a, a low profile uh, in international politics and so dismantling of this uh, government run um, investment agency um, is probably one of uh, a tactical move with regards to these shares. Now at the moment this has also caused a bit of a rift between some of the senior executives executives of the company where the shares initially were, um, they've actually decided that uh, they've um, had enough and basically quit. Uh, yeah, the saga goes on and uh, I'll keep you posted as to what's going on because to be honest, if we did have something like that here on the island, trust me, the island would change inexorably and hopefully it might also change for the better um, it might also move forward in certain respects. I know some people don't like change, but 
to be honest, in some areas that change is needed. And it and when you look at the island, when you drive round it, you you see locations and areas where you know what. Uh, there is room here to do things on the island. As small as we may be, there is still room here on the island to do things. And I think if um, a golf course came to the island, and I remember when I first came here in 2005, there was a golf course to be built. I remember making the adverts for it and everything else like that. But it it relied upon a, a consortium of about five different people linking their land up one of the consortium decided I wanted the others and basically the whole project then just folded. And to be honest, um, everybody has said anywhere that opens a golf course, Cyprus is a prime example. When I first went there in, uh, in, in 1979, they had no golf course there except one army run golf course in Larnaca. And now I think that island has at least two or three golf courses there now. And the island is um, a 365 day a year um, uh, place to go to. Um, but it's not just through the golf courses, it's through other things as well. But it's just an example of what golf courses can bring. And also the employment that it brings. Uh, I know from my own um, experience over on the Peloponnese, big shout out to Helen, a friend of ours over there. Uh, her husband was involved with a golf course that was being built over there. Uh, Ian Woosenham was the, uh, the, the architect behind it and the way of play. And it took about five years for that golf course to get built. And it also brought about, 300, about um, 1,500 jobs, as far as I'm aware, to that area where there was no real employment in tourism so again yeah well I'll keep my eye on that story and uh, just see how it plays out right let's have a look and see who's tuning in at the moment i'm on my tablet so i don't always get your, your your comments very quickly dave lowry is watching nice to have you here dave give you a quick wave also andrew the fridge watkins i love that name he's also tuning in as well nice to have you with us as well buddy uh paul harrison ah paul harrison x raf reg buddy nice to have you with us as well Great to see you. Uh, haven't s spoken with Paul in a very long time, so I think the word is getting round. Nice to see you here. Got to say a quick hello to Barry Lug. Now, Barry Lug, uh, ex uh, Royal Green Jackets, uh, was stationed in Cyprus uh, back in the 90s. Uh, he was, last time I spoke to him, head of security at the Dorchester Hotel, not the Dorchester Hotel, the Savoy Hotel. And I remember, uh, I think you and I, between us, we could have got uh, Journeys Don't Stop Believing back in again uh, by certain entities uh, that would come into the uh, into the Savoy to dine so uh, nice to have you here Barry Barry was trying to get here this year but for whatever reason didn't manage to make it uh, obviously because of what was going on anyway love to have you with us Barry um, also Pam Stott nice to see you as well my lovely uh, who else we got Johnny Hayes oh, Johnny Hayes nice to have you here Johnny uh, ex Rathbridge buddy as well uh, also Joanne Curry nice to have you here as well uh, and Jan Lawrence nice to have you as well and Lyndon all the way from uh, Wales what's the weather like today in Wales I bet it's sunny while we're having grim overcast weather um, also who else have we got uh, Sakis Giorgio nice to have you with us uh, as well nice to see you I'm trying to think where I know you from Sakis I'll, it'll come to me in a while. Anyway, uh, Chris Jones, nice to have you with us as well. Adele Woodhouse, nice to see you too. Uh, also, Lisa Emma, thank you, my darling. Lovely to have you with us as well. Also, Paul Harrison again, he said hello. Uh, oh, he's giving me a wave. Thank you, I'll wave him back as well. Right, so um, that's it with uh, the local news at the moment. Um, st ah, still no word on the person who is in the hospital at the moment. Uh, as to who they are that got COVID the other day. Uh, we shall uh, find out, uh, obviously, maybe next week, uh, a bit more information as to who they are and what happened to them. Uh, Andrew the Fridge Watkins just said, bloody wet and windy in Wales. So there you go. It's wet and windy in Wales. Here it's just grim and dull. It looks like it's going to rain. Jane and I were 
uh, contemplating we probably still we probably going to go down the beach today uh to uh Puerto Camino uh just see if they're still turning and burning um oh that was an interesting thing i did a little patrol yesterday after seeing um uh, uh, Dennis a little drive around uh the the uh Silvi area still a few places open i've got to be honest chatting at one hotel and i can't remember the name of it uh, just opposite mythos time down there big hotel i can't remember the name of it um and i said what's happening with you guys are you, how long are you staying open till and i think they've got mainly polish guests in their hotel and they said that they're staying open until like the 10th of october so yeah there are still people arriving uh, there are still people coming but um it is now really, really quiet, especially where I go to in Sillaby, and um, it's slowly, slowly winding down. The Art Bar, they were busy. Uh, Paradise, they were busy-ish, uh, uh, but everywhere else just seemed to be just a bit quiet. But anyway, that's it for me for today. Uh, Quick shout out to Charles Ballantyne, Chick Ballantyne. Nice to have you with us. Paul Mason as well. Uh, and I've already said, I think it, who was it? It was the, the, the fridge said to me, Wales is windy, windy. Uh, I'll say it again. Wales is windy at the moment and dull. So uh, anyway, we're just dull here at the moment. No wind, thank God. Anyway, that's it from me. Uh, I'll keep me ear to the ground. I'll keep checking the local press. And if I hear of anything interesting, I will let you know. And once again, thank you for all the support, all the shouts, all the views. Still no word on me getting online a moment to rebroadcast. I'm still having some issues there with just upload of internet. Um, thinking of some new solutions to try and get at least a, a, a music show out once a week to you from somewhere, maybe from a different location. I don't know. I'm looking into it. Put it that way for all those people who are wondering what's happening with the music. Anyway, I'll speak to you again. You take care and have a great day wherever you are in the world. Oh, and happy birthday to Glenna, who's having her birthday today up there in probably what is now a very cold uh, Calgary up there in Canada and I'll see you again soon. You take care.